Fact. The average Swede throws out more than one kilogram of waste every day. Among EU countries, they have the fourth highest household energy consumption, partly due to their long, cold winter nights. Household electricity demand ranges from 2,000 to 5,000 kilowatt hours per year. Heating demand might be 10,000 kilowatt hours in an apartment or 15,000 in a single family house. In the 1970s, with the global oil crisis in full swing, a group of cities in southern Sweden saw a chance to do things differently, including by tapping into local resources to create circular energy systems. Follow me for a closer look at how that works. Across the region of Skåne, waste collected from households comes here, where it gets sorted by type and sent into different streams that turn it into new resources. Any toxic waste is removed beforehand for special treatment. Wet food waste gets mashed into a mud-like slurry and sent into processing for biogas and fertilizer. Dry waste gets dumped here, in the bunker, where a massive claw mixes it up to even out the energy value of every handful. And off to the furnace it goes. At temperatures of 1000 degrees Celsius, a single incinerator, of which Sisab has four, burns through 25 tons of waste per hour, all day, every day. As waste burns, a network of water-filled pipes uses the resulting heat in two different ways. The first set of pipes sends steam through turbines at the plant to generate electricity which is then sold on the market for local distribution. In a second set of pipes, steam from the turbines is directed through a condenser, which cools the temperature and transforms it back into hot water, ready for another round of heat and release. The heat energy extracted by the condenser is transferred to Malmo's district heating system, where hot water travels through underground pipes and up into buildings. In effect, when people turn on the heat, they are tapping into energy that was embedded in the waste they fed into the system. Across Sweden, about 500 district systems deliver 50% of all heating. Together, SISAP facilities and homes and buildings in the region operate as a big circular system. With the plant burning a wide range of waste close to the city, managing the release of pollutants is a major concern for SISAV. Diverse technologies play different roles in cleaning the flue gases. In the first step, electrostatic charges capture large and small dry particles. Gases then go through scrubbers and three different wet cleaning processes in which water and chemicals remove small particles and gaseous pollutants. In the second last step, electrostatic charges again play a role this time pulling the last particles out of the fluid from the wet processes. Finally, the remaining gases pass through a catalyst. Across these processes, the vast majority of pollutants and contaminants, including nitrogen oxides, are contained within the plant. Monitoring systems show that SISAV emissions are consistently well below permitted levels. SISAV is also meticulous about managing the slag that comes out of its furnaces, recovering metals that can be sent onward for additional recycling and reuse. The SISAV mission, maximum possible recycling and minimum possible landfill, means that today, almost every bit of waste gets recovered as energy, recycled or reused. Over the years, waste to energy has become recognized for its ability to deliver wins for both people and the planet. In fact, former landfill sites have been transformed into community parks. As SISAV is quick to point out, technology is only part of this success story. The way every person in the community deals with waste across all aspects of their daily lives 
plays a vital role. In fact, many would argue that it's time to scale up this cycle of sustainability 